Welcome to A Word for Today. My name is Brent Shias. Over the next 30 minutes, and it will go by quickly, Pastor Stefan Chauvet will share with us about Jesus in history, including some of the fascinating revelations he has received from the Lord over the years. Blessed with an unusual knowledge and understanding of the scriptures, his insights are sure to amaze and encourage you. Using illustrations to bring it home and Bible references to back it up, we will walk with him through the pages of history. Now, I was never much into history, but it's been different for you. Well, actually, Brent, neither was I a buff of history. It's actually the reading of the Bible that stirred this passion in me years ago. Okay, well, I'm sure you at home will soon see that studying history has never been this much fun or this interesting. So grab a pen and paper, you'll want to take notes, and join us as we discover the footprints of God and discern the footsteps of God in the vast field of human history. To tie this all together on a word for today, let's listen to Pastor Stefan Chauvet as we discover the place of Jesus in history. Welcome to the segment of our program called Discovering the Footsteps of God. This main portion of our show is dedicated to revealing the wonderful contribution of the Almighty in the pages of history. The exciting revelations you will hear in the coming weeks were born out of countless hours of research. For more than 30 years, I have scrutinized the pages of the Bible and devoured history books to bring you these wonderful insights into God's ultimate intention for humanity. As a passionate believer in Christ, I am fully confident that the God of the Bible exists, that he is active, and that he is involved in the march of civilization. I do believe that his footsteps can be heard in the vast fields of human history if we listen carefully. I also believe that learning the purpose of his eternal plan can help us make sense of the past as well as understanding our present difficult time. This section is named Discovering the Footsteps of God because the Bible does point to a God that marches before his people. In the second book of Samuel, chapter 5 and verse 24, we can read, As soon as ye hear the footsteps in the tops of the trees, move quickly, for that will mean the Lord has gone out before you. When God told King David to wait until he hears his footsteps in the woods, the Almighty was teaching the people of Israel to wait upon him before taking any decision. He was showing them that their God had to be first. He was to be their commander-in-chief. If they would put him first and trust him, all would be fine. In the same way as believers, we must learn to trust the Lord. We must seek his wisdom and face each situation from his point of view. We must see things from God's perspective and not approach life with our own limited understanding. God's word must be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. For Christians, history holds no coincidence. Through the eyes of faith, history abounds with glorious manifestation of God's grace and goodness. And when believers are able to accurately point to the activities of God in the chapters of the past, they finally get a lot of satisfaction from the study of history. In fact, that's actually when history becomes fun. Having said that, Rare are those who have the ability to recognize the presence of the Almighty in the chronicles of a sinful world. It can be quite difficult if we do not know where to look and what to look for. Wise are the men who can discover subtle patterns and recognize an invisible God at work. But still, it may be quite difficult, but it's not impossible to detect the central role that God plays in the drama called the story of humanity. God may seem to work behind the veil of history, but this veil is removed when one comes to Jesus Christ. A generation ago, while explaining how the universe was working, Albert Einstein stated that nature was not the mere product of random chance. He once declared, God does not play dice. Now, I must admit, I agree with him. Even though Albert Einstein did not believe in the biblical God, he nevertheless spoke the truth. The universe does not look like it's disorganized, but instead, it looks like it was meticulously planned. Every field of science points to organization and not chaos. And of course, who says organization must automatically think organizer? But allow me to go even further than Mr. Einstein by saying that even though God does not play dice, he certainly doesn't play hide and seek either. 
In the midst of a cruel and sinful world, where it seems that evil constantly prevails, a wise man can see the footprints of God and hear his footsteps. Always remember, footprints are visible while footsteps are audible. You can see God's footprints while you can hear his footsteps. And the Almighty leaves both as evidence of his presence in the course of history. Visibly, he marches with nations. Audibly, he speaks to individuals. In the end, for historians, it's just a matter of figuring out when and where the Almighty leaves those clues. According to the Bible, we know that the Almighty watches over His people. On a one-to-one -one basis, God cares and bestows His love and mercy every single day on everyone. But on a national level, things are a bit different. He did intervene and rescue the enslaved Israelites from Egypt under the leadership of Moses and gave supernatural strength to David to defeat Goliath and the Philistine invaders. But when it comes to nations and countries, the ways of the Lord are a little more subtle. The God of the Bible can do anything, anywhere, at any time. But the issue is not if he has the ability to intervene, but rather, will he do so? For example, our Heavenly Father did not intervene during the crucifixion of his own son. Otherwise, by canceling the cross, it would have deprived millions of the salvation made available through the shed blood of Christ. Actually, I am glad he didn't spare his own son, for I, myself, has received eternal life because God did not interfere during the crucifixion of Jesus 2,000 years ago. In the same way, the Lord rarely intervenes in the global affairs of mankind. He allows them to exercise their free will. He has infinite wisdom. He knows what is right and what is wrong. He knows the beginning from the end, yet he does not interfere with man's freedom of choice. I repeat, God rarely mingles in the march of civilization, but when he does intervene, it's always for a specific purpose. Now let's get our facts straight. As we embark on this exciting journey in the coming weeks, we must first ask ourselves this crucial question. Is studying history really that important? Somehow, I know that some still doubt the necessity of focusing on history simply because of their school days memories remind them that studying history was usually boring. There were long periods of time filled with useless facts and meaningless characters. So somehow, I do understand why most people run away from history books. But what truly concerns me is much more alarming than people simply getting bored with history classes. Sadly, by a frightening twist of faith, and right in the middle of this information age where everyone is online, it has actually become popular to ignore and even despise the lessons of history. It's truly a strange paradox. You and I are actually witnessing the appearance of a new and highly educated generation which is suffering from historical amnesia. The lessons of the past are forgotten too quickly. If left untreated, this intellectual slumber could prove disastrous. One just has to consider how Adolf Hitler was able to lure most of the German people into supporting the socialist Nazi party simply by rewriting history. The common folks bought it, and the Führer was elected by a majority. In just a few short years, Hitler moved from prison to palace, from a zero to a hero, by simply repeating misleading slogans and twisted fables to those who knew very little about historical facts. As you can see, he who controls the media controls the masses. In many ways, ignoring the lessons of the past is like the spreading of deadly diseases. Whenever villains are revered and the virtuous ridiculed, strains of bigotry are introduced and contracted through mass media. By adding contagious opinion polls to the mix, society is eventually infected with the insane political ambition of obstructing Christian values and legalizing iniquity. It thus comes as no surprise that when skeptics question the importance of studying history, my answer remains emphatically affirmative, especially when it comes to appreciating the crucial role that Jesus Christ and his followers have played in the evolution of Western society. Personally, I love to read the Bible. I never get tired of reading again and again the stories of Noah, Moses, David, and Jesus. But with the same enthusiasm, I love to dig into history. I love the fact that it displays divine providence. In the last three decades, 
I have spent countless hours on earthing the wisdom that history offers. And because of this, I was able to acquire valuable lessons that spared me a lot of trouble in life. You see, there is a rhythm to history. There is a direction to history which strongly suggests a sense of purpose. Theologian Francis Schaeffer used to say there is a flow to history. The page of history are not simply crammed with mere facts and names. If you study them closely, you will soon notice that there seems to be an invisible hand at work behind the scene. God's handwriting is clearly on the wall of history, but we must first learn to read between the lines. From a believer's point of view, the beginning of humanity's history is clearly recorded in the Bible. God's purpose for civilization is clear. The ultimate ending is certain. Yes, indeed, the final pages of human history have already been written, and I promise you, God wins. After three decades of historical studies, I can assure you that there are patterns that are at times quite subtle and yet are extremely revealing. For example, I've observed that with the greatest breakthroughs experienced by society, often come the greatest price to be paid. Let me explain. In 1865, right after the end of the American Civil War, President Abraham Lincoln was cowardly shot. Yet, just a few months before he was brutally murdered, Lincoln had signed the Emancipation Proclamation by declaring all slaves to be free. So you see, Abraham Lincoln, along with thousands of innocent slaves and soldiers, paid with their own blood the long-awaited freedom of the African American. No less appalling, during World War II, six million Jews were cremated in the Nazi camps of Adolf Hitler, a terrible event which led to the creation of the State of Israel in 1948. But above all other examples, even more poignant, Jesus Christ had to shed his precious blood and die on a cruel cross in order to purchase eternal salvation for mankind. So you see, for every breakthrough, there is a corresponding sacrifice. No sacrifice, no breakthroughs. And ultimately, the supreme sacrifice ever recorded in human history, that is, the crucifixion of Jesus, the Messiah, was for the redemption of those who would surrender their lives to Him. The Lamb of God gave His life for the sheep. The Son of God gave His life for the sons of men. The sinless gave His life for the sinful. Now I have a question for you. Before Mount Everest was discovered in 1856, which mountain was the highest peak on earth? Some may say Kilimanjaro in Africa. Others may say K2 in Europe. But the answer is, wait for it, Mount Everest. Yes, Mount Everest was always the tallest mountain on earth, even before it was officially discovered. I know, I know. Some of you will say, well, it's a trick question. Yes, maybe you're right, it is a trick question. But there's a lesson to be learned here. You see, the truth does not change even if you are unaware of the facts or if you disagree with them. Likewise, America was never discovered by Christopher Columbus because America was always there. Truth is unchanging. For example, gravity is a fixed law of nature. If you don't agree with gravity, try to ignore it. You'll pay a dear price. In the same way, in today's world, opinions fluctuate. Polls vary. Even morality is constantly at the mercy of political correctness, but the truth never changes. Now, Jesus said he was the truth. He didn't say he was part of the truth or say he was simply truthful. Jesus essentially said he was the embodiment of truth. That is a shocking statement for many. Some may not like to hear this. It may be too difficult to swallow for confused intellectuals, but remember that the truth does not change whether we like it or not. From an observer's point of view, Jesus is either the truth or he's the biggest liar ever recorded in history. Well, 30 years ago, I chose the former option. I accepted Jesus as the truth. And every man on earth must be warned that ignoring this truth comes with eternal consequences. There is no doubt in my mind that Christianity's finest contribution to humanity far outweighed all the abuses done in the name of the biblical God. Throughout the centuries, so-called believers have declared wars in the name of their Roman faith. Take the Crusades, for example. But I assure you that it was done against the express teaching of Jesus. 
Let's never forget that true Christianity is not responsible for each act of war and violence committed under its banner. On the contrary, an unbiased study of history proves that it was actually atheists and pagan regimes that have largely been responsible for most of the violence and the death of untold millions. And yet, that's not what our educational establishment would like us to believe. You see, pristine Christianity is totally different from any other system of worship. It's based on a personal relationship with a Savior and God, and not simply a mere obedience to a religious creed. Christianity is a lifestyle and not a religious concept. It's more than attending Mass on Sunday or during the holiday season. It's a relation and not a religion. That is why, aside from Christianity, no other faith has influenced the world in a more positive way. In fact, it's the true followers of Jesus Christ that have literally shaped Western civilization from the ground up. From the field of science, medicine, and education to the establishment of true freedom-loving democracies, Christianity stands alone in the chronicles of human history. And who says Christianity says the Bible? Without question, the Word of God, the Bible, is the most influential work in history, the cornerstone of Western knowledge, the primary source of laws and morality. From the Bible, we discover that the earth is a sphere and not flat. From the Bible, we discover that the earth floats in space and hangs on nothing. From the Bible, we get the week of seven days. Even more, from the Bible, we are blessed with the words of Jesus. The Bible is the source of Christianity. And since Jesus is the Word of God, Christ is the source of true Christianity. Not the Pope, not the televangelist, and certainly not CNN. Imposing historical figures often emerge from times of great distress. The fact that they are loved or disliked often depend on the point of view of each individual. Good or bad, giants of history are usually manifested through human struggles and times of profound confusion. Let me explain. From the bloody French Revolution emerges Napoleon Bonaparte. British taxation and the American Revolution gave the world George Washington. World War II and Adolf Hitler led to the unparalleled leadership of Sir Winston Churchill, my favorite. But above all, the original sin and the downfall of mankind resulted in the manifestation of God in human form, Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, the Savior of the world. You can recognize the greatness of a man by the fact that his abilities transcend the epoch he was born into. Giants of history are not the product of their generation. They don't try to follow popular culture. They transform it. Their force of will and character is bigger than the time they live in. For example, prominent leaders like Napoleon and Julius Caesar could reshape any society regardless of what century they were born. Just drop Napoleon Bonaparte in today's world and he would still dominate the evening news. Case in point, 200 years after his death, most of the civil code drafted by Napoleon are still in use today in many cities of the world. That's how flawless his work was. As for Caesar, he still remembered every month of July, Julius July, which was named in his honor. Now, that doesn't mean that I agree with everything Napoleon and Caesar accomplished. Certainly not. But none can deny that they have altered the world we live in. Their presence in history left an unmistakable impact. This world abounds with individuals who have left their imprints on the pages of history. From Caesar to Genghis Khan, from Napoleon to Churchill, there are many names that are remembered, revered, and often reviled. But if you search your public library or surf the net to study the past, you will quickly find that there seems to be two worlds running parallel to each other. First, there is the realm of what is commonly referred to as the secular world. That's where you will find your typical heroes along with the dreaded tyrants, often on the same page. That's where you'll find Neil Armstrong and Joseph Stalin. That's where you'll find the greatest accomplishments of human history next to the sinister chapters of human tragedy. I personally call this broad historical road the secular highway of history. Now, there is another realm, an even more important street, which is running next to the secular highway. It's a spiritual path all too often ignored by historians, even though it deserves their full attention. It's a road strictly used by those who have given their hearts to the Almighty. I call this narrow spiritual avenue the highway of faith. On this highway of faith, you will find the likes of Paul the Apostle, Polycarp, 
Augustine of Hippo, John Wesley, and Smith Wigglesworth. These names are commonly referred to in Christian homes, but rarely mentioned in secular circles. You'll never hear about the good works accomplished by people of faith during the nightly news. So you see, there are two worlds existing side by side. It's a tale of two kingdoms, the kingdom of this world and the kingdom of God. Both have their own kings and both have their devoted subjects. Both have their own historians and both have their own section at the library. And even though the secular highway of the world runs parallel to that of the people of God, sometimes, although rarely, they intersect. In the case of Jesus, for instance, both worlds converged. Like I have said before, the Almighty rarely gets involved in the affairs of men, but in the person of Jesus, that is exactly what he did. As you can see on this image, on the secular highway, Jesus was called the Son of Man. On the highway of faith, he is known as the Son of God. Only the cross of Christ offer a bridge between the two worlds. It's the only exit available to exchange highways. Only in Christ can you switch from hell's turnpike to the glorious avenue of holiness. One path leads to perdition, while the other leads to eternal bliss. That is why I say that Jesus Christ is the most important figure in history. Jesus is the central character in the story of humanity. No other persona has been more influential. He is the focal point of creation. Even atheists and liberals must concede that Jesus of Nazareth is not just another historical character, but rather the central figure which divides history into two distinct periods, that is, before and after his celebrated birth, B.C. and A.D. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, has touched and influenced the world without any army, without governmental support, and without the majority's approval. No printing press, no Twitter, no Facebook, no internet, no telephone, no television, and no cars. In three short years, strictly based upon the force of his character, this humble Jewish carpenter was able to change this world permanently. Now, that's a great man. All historians have to admit that the achievements of Jesus Christ remain unmatched. His parables transcend the work of humanity's greatest mind. His miraculous power to raise the dead and his authority to command nature and demons demand respect. Jesus is the most compelling personality in history. There's no one like him. His consecrated life has earned him the honor to receive a name which is above all other names. The Bible ascribes to the Lord a Trinitarian title, a title that reflects his divine nature. It's a title that reveals his supreme authority on earth as well as in heaven. For our Lord Jesus is the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, and the God of Gods. Now, my prayer for you is that you make this Jesus your Lord, your King, and your God. He is the only one that can save you from a life of sin and unhappiness. He is the only one that can exchange the path of destruction for a path of eternal salvation. Only a shed blood can wash your sins away and give you peace of heart and mind. Please do not reject this call today and pray with me. Lord, please forgive me from all my sins. Wash me with your blood and fill me with your Holy Spirit. I believe you died on the cross and rose from the dead three days after. Be my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And this was the word for today. Thank you for joining us on this episode of A Word for Today. If you like discovering the footsteps of God through the message of Pastor Stefan, please follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. For more exclusive content, visit us at awordfortoday.ca. Also, we would love to hear from you. Please don't forget to leave your questions and comments so we can interact with you. We might use your inputs in an upcoming program. Back to you, Brent. Thank you, Linda. And to close, our quote of the day from a true hero of the faith, author and apologist C.S. Lewis, who said, if you want religion to make you feel really comfortable, I certainly don't recommend Christianity. Oh, certainly not, Brent. Well, we hope you were blessed by the message today and invite you to join us again. Good night, everyone.
If you felt encouraged by the message of Pastor Stéphane Chauvet, be sure to take advantage of the following offer. For only $20, you will receive the book Born Again by Dr. Alex Ness. It describes the major steps in Christian growth and has been used in churches and by ministers for over 50 years. For $70, you will be sent a three-book package. First, the classic work of Thomas Akempis, The Imitation of Christ, written in the year 1427 and a true must for any serious follower of Jesus. Also, the celebrated Pilgrim's Progress, written by John Bunyan and translated into more than 200 languages. It is widely regarded as one of the most significant works of Christian literature of all time. And of course, the book, Born Again. For a donation of $150, you'll receive a complete package containing the books mentioned, as well as the large size volume, The Trinity, written by Pastor Stéphane Chauvet. It is an exhaustive biblical demonstration of God's triune nature, one of the most comprehensive ever assembled. Finally, we will include the beautifully illustrated Chinese Writing Wonders, which clearly and amazingly shows how the Word of God is embedded in Chinese characters. As a bonus, you will also receive this unique gift, the Gospel in a Symbol Pin. Place your order now. Call our North American toll-free number 1-877-866-7424 or visit wordfortoday.ca. Tax receipts will be issued for any donation of $20 or more. The toll-free number again is 1-877-866-7424 or visit awordfortoday.ca. Place your order today.